Welcome back to another essential finance video, time to use my design skills to help solve some finance problems. In today's video, I'm going to go over six very common mistakes that beginners can make in the world of dividends, including myself. But hopefully my experiences and learning can help you avoid making those same mistakes or fall into any of those traps. So now let's get started and roll the intro. Morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. And today I'm here to use design thinking to help explain six common dividend mistakes. If you don't know a whole lot about dividends, I made a video about that which covers the most most basic thing about dividends. Links up here and description down below. After that, after you graduate from it, this video will make a lot more sense to you. Just as a preview, here are the six common mistakes. I'm going to dive into details one by one, show you examples, give you the breakdown, and walk you through the design thinking framework so that you can see why they are dividend traps and mistakes to avoid. And as you know my style, you don't need to smash the like button yet, do that in the end if you find this video useful or insightful. Hold me accountable. Now without further ado, let me put in my invisible designer hat and let's dive right in. Let's first start with the design thinking framework. Who are the users here? What are dividends for? Well, in this case, it's for me, for myself. I'm solving my own money problem. And then next, what's our goal? What's our need? What do we want? We want to grow our account. We want to make more money in investing, right? We want to do that through investing in dividend paying stocks. Since now we have that established, we can go to mistake number one. High dividend yield is great. Yeah, it's great, but it's also a trap. Let's take a look at this one. SHLX with an almost 10.4 dividend yield. It's high, it's great, but what is the catch? Well, let's do some simple math and compare. SHLX has a 10% dividend yield for five years. You get about 52% return in dividends. But at the same time, in the five year time frame, the stock itself has declined over 57%. So in the end, net, you will get about a negative 5% return. Apple, on the other hand, only has a 0.5% dividend yield. So over five years, you get 2.5% return in dividends. But the stock itself actually rose 500%. And net net, you will get about 5 502% return. So to look back, what are our goals? Again, we want to grow our account by investing in dividend paying stocks. So now we have two ideas, concepts, directions, or I will call them prototypes, and we have tested them, SHLX and Apple. With prototype one, SHLX pays a very high dividend, 10.4%, but it also gives us a negative 5% return over five years. It does not help grow my account, absolutely not helping achieve my goal. Apple on the other hand has a very low dividend yield, but it does help us grow our account. So if I have to choose between these two, of course, I'll pick Apple. This is just one example of why high dividend yield is a trap, that you can easily make the mistake of chasing high dividend yield stocks. And just a few more things, a few more red flags for high dividend stocks and why they are traps. The first one being, have you ever questioned why they're so high? If you've watched my previous video, you will know dividend yield is calculated by the dividend pay in a year over the stock price. Let's say their dividend payout amount is the same. If the stock price is tanking, which is you know the denominator, of course the dividend yield will go up. It's just simple, very simple elementary school math there. And if the stock price tanks over a long period of time, it's not great to own that stock to begin with. It's likely that their fundamental mental business is not doing well, which leads to the second red flag. If their business is not doing well, they are likely to have declining net income, declining profit. And we know dividend means divide the profit. So if the profit is declining, can they even sustain the current dividend amount? They might reduce it or cut it. All these are against our need, our goal. We need more dividends to compound and grow our account. So this does not work. Red flag number three, some dividend paying or high dividend paying ETFs have high expense ratio, meaning how much money you will pay for the ETF fund manager to manage the fund for you. So that is going to offset your dividend yield and then eventually eat up your final return. For example, GCOW, GCAL, has a dividend yield of 4.39% but there's a 0.6% expense ratio. So really your net dividend yield is about 3.79%. So what is a good number? How high is too high? 3% plus or minus. I have not seen much that is above 5% without a catch. It's likely that they might not be able to sustain their dividend payout or their dividend payout ratio is too high. They have declining profit, negative growth. The most common one is that their stock has been tanking over a period of time, a long period of time. That's a bad sign. If the knife is falling, why catch the falling knife? Common mistake number two, 
decreasing dividend yield is bad. So I'm not going to buy any dividend paying stock with a decreasing dividend yield. Well, again, not always. We can start with the fundamental of dividends. A dividend is divided from the profit, from the net income. Typically in an earnings report, we can see how much dividend per share that the company has declared. And that would depend on the EPS, earnings per share, if their EPS is decreasing. And then they can start reducing dividend per share. If the yearly dividend payout goes down faster than the stock price, then of course the dividend yield will drop. And then yes, decreasing dividend yield is bad. However, that's not the full picture. Focusing on just the dividend yield is misleading in my opinion, it's a mistake in my opinion. In my last video, I've outlined the dividend history in the past three quarters for Apple, and it clearly shows that they have a decreasing dividend yield. However, the dividend yield is decreasing simply because the stock price is increasing. The actual amount of dividend payout is exactly the same in the past three quarters, 22 cents per share. The yield changes just because again, elementary school math, the denominator goes up, the result goes down. Also, we have established that Apple is a dividend paying stock and only it will help grow our account. So don't fall into the trap of decreasing dividend you must be bad. My personal take is that focus on the actual amount, the actual dividend payout amount and the stock price. Is the dividend amount increasing quarter over quarter? Is the stock price increasing quarter over quarter? Again, the yield is a very rough estimate of how much money in dividends you might receive if you own shares of this company. Common mistake number three, not enrolled in DRIP. This is a very common mistake and many people don't even know about it. In most platforms nowadays, they should have a program called DRIP, Dividend Reinvestment Plan. It basically means if you enroll into DRIP, they're gonna use your dividends, the cash dividends, to buy more shares of this company. And because you now you have more shares, they're gonna pay you more dividends in the next quarter. And because you have more dividends, you can buy more shares. It creates an incredible flywheel. And it's proven with DRIP, you can make more money. And as you remember our goal, DRIP does help you to grow your account faster. Plus, the whole point of dividend investing is to let the dividends help you compound your account slowly, little by little over time. So if you own dividend stocks but not doing DRIP, they just lose their soul. And that is just so crushing to see. If you use Robinhood, you can really turn it on in the investing tab under your profile. If you use TD Ameritrade, it's under my account, dividend reinvestment. Common mistake number four, not aware of dividend payout ratio. Remember when a company declared the dividend per share payout, it's actually from the EPS, from the profit. It's part of the profit. And if you divide dividend per share by EPS, then you will get the dividend payout ratio. It just means what percentage of the earning is dividends. Back to our goal, we want to grow our account, which means the more dividend we receive, the faster we can grow our account, the better. The main way you can get more dividend is that the company that you own will declare more dividends over time in the future. For example, Apple Q1 to Q2, they raised their dividend from 0.025 to 0.22. In Q2, they have an EPS of 1.4 and 0.22 divided by 1.4 it's 16%. So in Q2 2021, Apple had a dividend payout ratio of 16%. Versus the same quarter, the same time frame for AT&T, they had a 1.04 EPS in which 0.52 is dividends, a 50% dividend payout ratio. So looking at the two, which one do you think can sustain a longer dividend increase in the future? I think it will be Apple because it has a way lower payout ratio, more room to grow their dividends in the future. Therefore, in the long run, Apple can meet my goal better. Common mistake number five, keep dividend stock only for a short time. Dividend investing can be frustrating because it starts like nothing, but then it warms up and take off. One really, really common mistake is you just focus on a short, short time. You buy the dividend stock, hold it for weeks, months, and then you see it's not doing much then you sell it. And this chart here has already told us the growth is not going to be fast in the beginning. And therefore, your focus should shift on the later phase and remind yourself how beautiful your account will be growing here rather than in the beginning. We can also prototype and test again. Prototype one, you hold for only a few months. Prototype two, you hold it for years. Which prototype, which method will help you fulfill your need? Of course, the long-term one. Investing in general is a long game, which means it takes time. I would say buy and hold for three years is the minimum. Five years is common. 
10 plus years, you can really brag about you're a real investor. If it's shorter than that, there's a term for it. Um, gambling. We're doing dividend investing, right? Not dividend gambling. So if you can't do long term, then you're not dividend investing. Then you're totally missing the point. Then that is a mistake to avoid. Last one. Common mistake number six, collect dividends and run. Maybe you're thinking about, hmm, let me just buy the stock the day before X dividend date. So I can just collect the dividends and then sell the stock and boom, I'm rich. That's not likely to happen and there are two reasons for it. First one being just like mistake number five, you're not sticking with it, it's not long term, there's no time for your dividend to compound itself. And number two, there's something that you might want to know on the X dividend date, the stock will actually adjust its stock price for the dividend payout. For example, Apple Q4 has an X dividend date of November 5th. Say Apple stock was trading 150 per share on November 4th. When it gets to November 5th, it will actually drop to 149.78 as an adjustment for the dividend payout of 22 cents. So if you buy a share the day before for 150, on the X dividend date, your share will be worth 149.78. If the stock doesn't move, you set it now for 149.78 plus the 22 cents dividend you will get, your net is still 150. You will not get paid more. There's no loophole here to exploit. Plus on the X dividend date, how do you know the stock is gonna stay flat, go up, or down. You really don't know. Again, when there's such a huge uncertainty, selling is short term is just like gambling. And that concludes the last dividend mistake we should be aware of, we should avoid when doing dividend investing. All right guys, we have covered quite a lot today. Which dividend mistake is new to you? Let me know in the comment section down below. There are more related topics that I plan to do in future videos. If you have a strong preference of which one you want to see first, simply just drop a note in the comment. If you like free money and don't mind just two minutes of work, you can use my referral codes for one one free stock from Robinhood, two free stocks from Webull, $10 worth of Bitcoin from BlockFi, and lastly, $5 free cash from the Cash App. If you sign up for that, in addition, I will give you $2 worth of Apple stocks. Great deal. Dividend paying stocks. You can find all the referral codes, links, and instructions in the description down below. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you learned what you wanted to learn today, well, congratulations, and hope I earn a big like from you for this video. If you want to see more finance by design videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the road. Have fun, follow your passion, and keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Cheers! Thank you.